Okay, so uh, today we will be continuing our discussion flexual uh, concepts. So for the uh, inelastic stage, uh, remember that uh, we have finished uh, uh, the elastic stage. Taking into consideration both uh, the end crack and the uh, crack stage. Okay? So uh, here we are now on the uh, behavior beyond the elastic range. So we are now referring to strength design as your inelastic uh, behavior. And uh, the uh, approach in uh, doing inelastic uh, concept and analysis is not on the allowable stresses but uh, it mainly focuses on the uh, determination of uh, uh, the criteria for strength which is the moment criteria okay so this is now your criteria for having a safe design such that phi mn again this is your resistance must always be greater or equal to the loads where phi is the capacity reduction factor, normally uh, it's 0.94 fluctual members. Mn is the nominal moment. Okay. Mu is the ultimate moment or factored moment uh, given by the load combinations. So in strength design procedure, we are going to use... Uh, uh, this first a combination because this is for reinforced concrete design and uh, this is for steel design so for other load combinations uh, we can refer to the NSCP uh, to give us a summary of uh, all the load combinations but uh, what is important here class is for you to uh, be able to uh, know the procedure on how to apply the inelastic or the strength design approach uh, in beams so in the strength design method remember that uh, this does not solve stresses so rather it computes uh, capacity or the moment uh, capacity so let's have some figure here so in the concept of strength design the transform section method is not needed so we ought to have to take note of the uh, the section of the member okay the strain distribution based on compatibility okay so this is the strain compatibility and this is the stress uh, diagram so for the stress diagram you will notice that uh, the actual stress is up to the parabolic okay 
but since uh, we want to simplify things, the stress diagram was converted to a rectangular stress block. So this is now the rectangular uh, stress block. in which the parameters are given on the basis of uh, witness parameters okay so Whitney made a uh, an analogy on how to convert okay convert the parabolic to a rectangular stress block for simplicity of computation okay take note of the the uh, uh, labels or dimensions b the width of the beam d the depth of the beam the effective cover okay the area of steel so here instead of using kd we are going to use a c okay small letter c for the uh, distance of the compression fiber to uh, the neutral axis okay so this is now your epsilon uh, concrete and this is the epsilon of steel okay so one of the witness uh, parameter is uh, letter A, which is called the depth of the stress block. And uh, everything now is computed on the basis of the figure. So this is now a rectangular volume. Okay, so it's 0.85. Uh, normally, uh, this is 0.85 of Fc prime. Okay, so and then this is A times okay so 0.85 fc prime times a okay and then the width of the beam is multiplied to get your compression uh, block c okay so the compression block is like a solid okay a solid block which has the dimensions okay uh, 0.85 f prime c this is a and this width here is p okay the width here is actually the width of the section there so this constitutes your uh, rectangular stress uh, block. To derive the moment strength, Mn, the uh, moment strength is simply a couple or given by a couple C and T multiplied by the moment arm. So we notice that the uh, the moment arm here is uh, located from the centroid okay, of the block okay, up to the location of steel. Okay, so this is now your uh, moment arm Z which is equivalent to okay, your total depth so the, the, the depth is D okay so this is simply equal to the depth minus one half of A okay so this is A over 2 so this is actually your JD uh, in your elastic but we're not going to use uh, JD 
uh, instead we are using going to use a or simply d minus uh, a over 2 so that your moment becomes c times d minus a over 2 or t times d minus a over 2. And to satisfy equilibrium uh, condition for the couple, so c is equal to t, your a can actually be solved by simply uh, taking into consideration that these two forces are equal. So if I say I equate now your C here and your T here, wherein T is equal to ASF1, so I can easily determine my depth of stress block, which is ASFY, all over 0.85 FC prime B. Okay, so how do we make sure that your steel uh, will yield in tension? So this is the first question we need to answer always when going when we are going to get the moment capacity. You know? So so we, will the will the tension uh, of the steel reach it yield its yield uh, uh, value F Y okay. So will F S be equal to or greater than F Y. So if Fs is greater or equal, then the steel yields, okay? If not, if it is less than, the steel will not okay, yield. So we can verify that easily by deriving a formula for Fs uh, using a strain distribution diagram. Okay, so let's take note that uh, our epsilon CU given in our uh, first lecture, the ultimate strain is 0 0.003, okay, as given in your assumption in the ACI, okay. So in other, in other uh, codes, uh, it may be different, but using ACI and NSCP codes, Okay, the value of epsilon CU normally is 0 0.00. And if we are going to use this triangle and this triangle here, the basis of your derivation for the ratio and proportion, we get epsilon CU is to C all over C is equal to epsilon S plus epsilon CU is to D, okay? So recall now that the uh, strain is stress over the modulus of elasticity as given by Hooke's law. So we note that substituting your epsilon S and epsilon CU in this formula will give to this formula, okay? And solving for Fs here, we'll get this formula by simply cross-multiplying and taking note that the modulus of elasticity of steel is 200,000 megapascal. We get this formula or taking the LCD, we get this formula. So this is the normal formula we are going to use in order to check your steel if it will yield or not. Okay, so note if the resulting value is greater or equal, then the steel yields. If not, the steel will not yield. Okay, so for the witness stress uh, block parameter. A, this is the relationship given by the works of Whitney that A is equal to beta 1C. 
where beta 1 is actually related to the value of fc prime. So if fc prime is less than or equal to 28 megapascal, use beta 1 equals 0.85. And if fc prime is greater than 28 megapascal, you use this formula, but you should not exceed a value of 0.65. So this is the minimum value for your FC prime. Okay, let's have now an example, a very simple example on how to determine the moment capacity or moment strength MN given FC prime and FY to be 20 and 300 respectively. Okay, so we are also given the, B, the beam width, the depth, the effective cover, and the uh, area of steel. AS. Okay, so the, the, the moment strength is simply defined uh, using uh, this formula, but we need to get uh, solved for A first before we can proceed. Okay, so what is A? So in this case, we always assume, okay, that steel will yield and then check it later. So, so the procedure starts from uh, assuming always that Fs is greater than Fy, okay? Uh, or this still yields, or else uh, you cannot use this formula because there will be two unknowns, no? So you have to assume that this is Fy and then solve for A and then back compute your C. C is A over beta 1. What is beta 1? 0.85 because this is 20 megapascal. Remember, if Fc prime is less than 28, automatic it's 0.85. So you get a 62.28 millimeter. And checking uh, Fs, if it, if, if it yields or not, you just plug it to the formula a while ago that we have derived. So this becomes 600. And then this 400 minus 62.28, that's your C, divided by C is equal to 3,000, which is greater than 300, therefore, still yields. So the assumption is correct. In case the assumption is not correct, you have to go back to the uh, equation and substitute the value of Fs in terms of C to this formula. Okay? So since uh, it satisfies the assumption, then we can proceed very well with the determination of the moment strength MN is equal to C D minus A over 2. Uh, this is a big big letter C, no? it's not small C. So this is 0.85 FC prime AB times D minus A over 2 and then plug in the values. Okay, so this is 52.94, 200, and then 400 minus 52.94. Okay, this is just to convert your unit to kilonewton meter. Okay, because this is in millimeter and uh, newton, no? Newton millimeter, because this is in megapascal, remember that one megapascal is one newton per millimeter square okay so this is in a newton millimeter divided by 10 to the negative becomes 67.23 kilonewton meter so this is your answer okay so that gives you the basic computation for the moment strength uh, using uh, the inelastic approach or what you call the strength design method in reinforced concrete. Thank you.